Hi scholars, it's Miss Sun here. Today we're gonna to be reading a book together and the book that we're gonna read is The Lion and the Little Red Bird. Before we check in with the front cover, we're gonna do three things together. We're gonna to share a good reader question, an important word, and the genre of this book. So your good reader question is, I want you to think of a time when someone didn't understand what you were saying and how did you feel? Think of a time when someone didn't understand what you were saying and how do you feel? And if you can, Please pause this video and share your idea with someone close to you. Great. So I remember when I first moved to Seattle and I was talking to someone who didn't understand the words that I was saying. And I was feeling really confused because I wasn't sure why that person didn't understand what I was saying. And then I realized that I was using some words in pidgin that is usually spoken in Hawaii that mean something different in English. So then, when we asked some questions, then we realized why we weren't understanding each other. And I no longer felt confused. So thinking about your answer to that question is gonna help you connect with both of these characters in our story. The second thing we're gonna share is an important word. That word is enchanted. Let's clap out that word in syllables. Enchanted, let's pump it up. Enchanted, let's chop it down. Enchanted. Well, it's gonna end by counting on your fingers. Enchanted. There are three syllables in that word. Enchanted means fascinated, like you're very interested and it holds your attention. The last thing we're gonna talk about is the genre of this book. So the genre of this book is fiction, which means that this story came from the author's brain and heart and the author used their imagination to create the story. So we're gonna see things like characters, a setting, a problem or solution in this story. The Lion and the Little Red Bird. This book was written and illustrated by the same person. Elise Clevin. One afternoon, a little red bird saw a lion with a bushy green tail, as green as a forest. The bird had never seen anything so unusual, because usually lion's tails aren't green, and so pretty. Just looking at the lion's green tail made her happy. Lion, lion, she said. Why is your tail so green? The lion didn't understand the bird's language. He thought she was simply chirping like birds do. He smiled at her. Sounds like the author is telling us that the lion and the bird speak different languages. The lion wandered down to a field of orange flowers. The bird watched him roll and sniff and chase butterflies. Then so they walked west with the setting sun and disappeared into a cave. The bird waited on a tree nearby. She wanted to see the lion's green tail again. But the lion didn't come out of the cave. So the bird made herself a soft nest and slept through the warm starry night. In the morning, the lion came out swishing his tail, which was no longer green, but orange as a flower, orange as a butterfly, orange as a setting sun. Lion, lion, the bird chirped, astonished or surprised. Why is your tail so orange? Again, the lion didn't understand the bird. He smiled at her. Hmm. The lion and the little red bird are reminding me of, of the two characters in Drawn Together, the book that Mr. Connor wrote with you yesterday, with the grandpa and the grandson who spoke different languages and they weren't able to understand each other. The lion climbed over a hill and up a mountain to a deep blue lake beneath a bright blue sky where the lion soaked his tired paws while the bird splashed nearby. At the end of the day, the lion climbed back down the mountain over a hill and home to his cave. The bird settled down in a tree, wondering as the sky darkened about the lion and his orange tail. Let's stop and make a prediction or a good guess. Why do you think that the lion's tail is orange? Let's find out. But in the morning, the lion's tail was no longer orange. It was blue as the brightest blue sky, blue as the deep mountain lake where he soaked his paws. Lion, lion, the bird chirped, enchanted. Remember that means that you're really interested. How did your tail change from orange to blue? Are you a magician? Someone who does magic? The lion just smiled. I wonder how the bird is feeling that the lion is not answering her questions. And I wonder if she knows that the lion doesn't understand her. The lion went over to a bush full of shiny red berries. They're beautiful berries, 
or very sour. Lion, the bird chirped, making a face. Those berries are still, are still too sour to eat. Why don't you pick the berries when they're ripe and ready to be eaten? The lion just smiled, thinking of how much he liked the birds chirping company. Hmm. It sounds like the little red bird is really worried about the lion eating sour berries. Sounds like she cares about the lion. And it also sounds like the author is telling us that the lion enjoys the little red bird spending time with him. All afternoon, the lion picked berries while the bird nibbled on sunflower seeds nearby. And once, when the lion stepped on a thorn, the bird pulled it out for him. Oh, I can tell that the little red bird really cares about the lion. At sundown, the lion swished his tail goodbye and returned to his cave. The bird settled down in her nest and she wondered what color the lion's tail would be in the morning. She wished he would answer her questions. Hmm. I wonder how the little red bird is feeling. I'm wondering if the little red bird feels frustrated like how the grandson felt in Drawn Together when he wasn't able to understand what his grandpa was saying or get any of his questions answered. During the night, a storm came. Thunder crashed and lightning flashed. Rain swept away the bird's nest. And hearing the noise, the lion rushed out and reached up to the tree where the bird was crouched and shivering and scared. He lifted her down and carried her into his cave. It sounds like the author is telling us that the lion really cares about the little red bird. The cave was warm and colorful. The walls were filled with pictures of green forest, orange flowers, butterflies, sunsets, a bright blue sky, and a deep blue lake. Hmm. Where do you think those pictures came from on the walls in the cave? Let's find out. Lion, lion, the bird chirped. Delighted, how did these pictures get here? The lion smiled, dipped his tail in a bowl of shiny red berry juice and painted a picture of the bird chirping on a berry bush. The bird sang while the lion painted. The little red bird sang a song without any questions, full of color and joy. Hmm. It sounds like the author is telling us that the little red bird isn't trying, isn't trying to ask questions or talk to the little or talk to the lion. Instead, she decided to sing a song that she knew that made the lion feel happy because he was smiling at her. The lion had never heard anything so unusual and so pretty. Just listening to the little red bird made the lion happy. Hmm. It sounds like the author and the illustrator are showing us that the lion and the little red bird found a way to communicate or found a way to talk to each other that made each other happy. The little red bird sang and made the lion happy and the lion painted and made the little red bird happy. Oh, you know, this is reminding me again of the grandson and the grandpa in the book Drawn Together where they were able to find a way to communicate and talk to each other through drawing. In the morning, the storm was past. The world was shining fresh and bright and the lion's tail was very red and the little bird knew why. She sang her happiest song and wondered what the lion would paint that night. The end. This book is called The Lion and the Little Red Bird. Your Good Reader Question Scholars is, how do you think that the bird and the lion felt about each other? How do you think the bird and the lion felt about each other? Remember that good readers use evidence from the book to support their idea using the illustrator's pictures and the author's words. And if you can, pause this video and share your idea with someone sitting next to you. How do you think the bird and the lion felt about each other? Great. I think that the lion and the bird cared about each other because I remember when the lion got a thorn in its paw and the red bird helped to take that thorn out. And when the little red bird's nest was swept away, the lion helped her and brought her back to his cave. And at the end of the story, I remember the author and illustrator were telling us 
that as the bird was singing and as the lion was painting, they both smiled and it made each other happy. You can read our skill scholars is comparing and contrasting texts or finding out ways that two books are the same and different. So as I was reading The Lion and the Little Red Bird, I was reminded of another book drawn together. So today you're gonna to find out ways of how these two books were the same by thinking about the characters in the books, maybe the characters' identities, their experiences or their character traits, or thinking about the problem in the story and how they're the same between both of the books and how they got solved. And you can record your ideas in the middle of a Venn diagram here where the circles overlap. And I'm gonna show you ways about how I thought these two books were different. So first I thought about the characters of the book. In The Lion and the Little Red Bird, the characters were the animals. That was the lion and the bird. Whereas in Drawn Together, the characters were people, which is the grandpa and the grandson. And then I also thought about the characters and how they were feeling in both of these books and how they were different. So for example, in The Lion and the Little Red Bird, the bird was feeling really curious and constantly asked the lion questions about his tail and about other things that the little red bird was curious about and didn't give up asking those questions. Whereas in Drawn Together, the boy was feeling frustrated after, a, after some time about not being able to connect and communicate with his grandpa. Another way that I found that these two books were different was looking at the setting. The setting in The Lion and the Little Red Bird was the forest, whereas in Drawn Together, it was in the house or grandpa's house. So scholars, your assignment today is to find out ways of how these two books are the same. And as I was reading The Lion and the Little Red Bird, you weren't connecting to that book or you're making a different text to text connection. I was reminded of a different book. You're more than welcome to use that book to find out ways of how those two books were the same and how those books were different. And I also had other ideas of books that I was reminded of as I was reading it. I was reminded of this book called The Sandwich Swap, where these two girls brought different sandwiches to school and they didn't understand why they brought different sandwiches and why they why the other person bought a sandwich that wasn't like theirs. And later they were able to connect when they tried each other's sandwiches and they were connected over food with the rest of their community. I was also reminded of another book, Kanan's book, when I get older, the story behind the waving flag, where Kanan was able to connect with his classmates who were also learning another language. And he connected with them through music where he taught his classmates his grandpa's poem, which became the song Waving Flag. So scholars, you can choose any book that you wanna compare or contrast with that's just right for you and a book that you remember. And we can't wait to see ways of how the, your two books were the same and different. Have a great day.